What's up, Lighthouse family? How y'all doing this morning? Hey, y'all ready for worship? I know I am. But before we start, I need y'all to do me one favor. Like, share, start a watch party. Y'all on Facebook, get some of y'all friends in. Call y'all kids in. Call moms in. Whatever y'all got to do, get y'all breakfast. But let's get ready for worship. I can promise you, the worship team got an awesome praise for y'all this morning. All right, y'all. Oh, snaps. I think it's time for me to go get on camera. I'll see y'all later. Welcome back, Lighthouse Nation. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are so glad you decided to stop in and worship with us on today. We are glad that you chose the Lighthouse to just lift up the name of God. So right now, before worship gets started, we're gonna just usher in his presence through prayer. So let's bow our hearts, lift up our hands to the Father. God, we love you. God, we honor you. Father, you are a good, good Father. You are loving and kind in all of your ways, Father. We glad, Lord God, that you are creator of heaven and earth. We're glad that you sit high and you look low we are glad lord god that you behold the good the bad and the ugly so father god right now we just come to say holy 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 are you lord god almighty we love you father we honor you father we reverence you king jesus we love you ruler we lift your name up oh god god we ask that this day that we will be glorified in and through us lord god be glorified in our minds be glorified in our hearts be glorified in our actions lord god father god we lift you up everything that easily besets us God we cast those things away from us God and we put our attention and our focus on you God we look to you because you are the most important person in our life God help us Lord God where we may have strayed father we ask that you just realign us with your perfect will realign us Lord God reset us Lord God renew our minds and our hearts God creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit father that when we lift up our hands to worship you Lord God that you receive it father we pray that you will receive our worship worship on today we pray lord god that our hearts be pure and god be glorified in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord lighthouse nation listen facebook youtube we want you to use your emojis and why don't you say to somebody in the comments watch me praise them i don't know what you come to do but since you've already logged on why don't you just give them the best that you got
desperate for you. We're desperate for you. Now let your glory.
desperate for you. Now let your glory settle here. Now let your glory settle here, God. Now let your glory settle here. Settle on the spirit of depression. Huh. Settle on the spirit of doubt. Settle on the spirit of fear. Settle here. Now let your glory settle here. Come on, right where you are, just begin to open up your mouth and worship. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much again for tuning in to our Sunday morning broadcast. And if you're on Facebook, we love that you're there. If you're on YouTube, we're excited that you're there. If you're watching us through our app, we are elated that you're there. We don't care how you come in. We're just glad that you are with us. It's hot down here in Houston. But this word that I have for you today should heat up your situation. Last week, we talked about a strategy for the unperfect. Today, I think I've got a word that will accompany that word. And I want to walk through it so that way we can see what it is that God actually has to say to us. You know, I am of the opinion that everything that God wants to say to us, he can say, has said, and will say through the word of God. One scripture says, the word of God is like a lamp to my feet. And it is a light to my path. That is to suggest that the word of God will illuminate any path that you get ready to take. I want to go to a familiar passage of scripture. Let's go to, to the New Testament. Last week, and if you enjoyed uh, last week's message, a strategy for the unperfect, uh, make sure that you let our team know because we actually want to bring you relevant word that will help you in your everyday life. So just holler at us and let us know that you enjoyed that word. And we always archive our messages on YouTube so that after you watch us live, uh, shortly thereafter, you can go back to YouTube and uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, make sure you're watching it again because the word of God says this in Psalms 1 and 1. He says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and he meditates on it day and night. That word meditates means you can't just get it on the first take. You have to do it day and night. So after you watch it live and you get the Holy Spirit uh, to revealing what it is he wants to say to you, go back, look at it again, and meditate on it at night. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number... Let's do 7. Let's do 7. Uh, my team told me... Uh, earlier about verse 7. So I had 8 on there. Let's go and do number 7. And I'll read verse 8 just because I like the way it sounds. I might not preach on it, but I just like the way it sounds. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse 8 says, we are troubled <laughs> on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not yet in despair. Verse 9, I got to do it. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God and not of us, that the power may be of God and not of us. I want to talk on this subject. I want to talk on this subject. Are you ready for it? Some of you all have been looking at a way out, for a way out. The devil has been knocking at your door whether it's the door to your mind, your heart, 
your soul, your vision. You haven't known what to do. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to respond. This is what I'm going to talk about today. You ready? This is my message. Today I want to talk about self-defense. I want to talk about self-defense because sometimes in your life you can't depend on somebody else to look out for you. Sometimes you got to do it for yourself. Let's talk about self-defense. You know, when you read this letter that Paul has written to the church at Corinth, this is his second letter, you have to ask yourself, why does anybody repeat themselves? If you have children, you know that sometimes you have to tell them something. Sometimes they get it on the first time. Every once in a while, you have to tell them again. Why does a person repeat themselves? Why does God say, Abraham, Abraham? Why does God say, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why would God say, Moses, Moses? Or why would he repeat himself to you. Isn't God loud enough for you to hear him the first time? I mean, isn't his voice proficient enough to be effective initially as opposed to eventually? Of course it is. We're talking about the God who said, let there be. And there was. If he can call a world into existence, Shouldn't he be able to call a person to attention? You, you didn't hear him say, let there be light. Light said, not yet. God said, I said, let there be light. Light said, not yet. God says, if I have to say, let there be light again, and then there's light. See, only humans have trouble listening. Everything else God created, let's be honest, got his command initially. We, who were born into sin, shaping in iniquity, we tend to hear God eventually. This text was written by, in my estimation and in my opinion, the greatest preacher of the New Testament. This is, this is Paul. Now, if you don't know Paul, if, if you just met him in Acts, if you just met him in the book of Corinthians, if, if you just met him in Ephesians, if you just met him in Philippians, then I can understand that you cannot have a full respect for the gravity of how Paul and his life and his journey is applicable to your situation because you met Paul when he was blind on the road to Damascus. And perhaps you met Paul when he was surviving shipwrecks. And perhaps you met Paul when he was digging his hand into firewood and was bitten by a snake to help other people. But can I tell you that Paul was unperfect? He was unperfect. When God initially summoned Paul, he wasn't preaching in the synagogue. In fact, according to Acts chapter 9, Paul was on his way to murder Christians. And the Bible says that he was breathing out threats and slaughter until he was arrested by a blinding light from God that left him without sight for three days. He was on his way to do something wrong when God called him to do something right. I, I could just stay there. I could stay there because... It is of the opinion of most of us that God is seeking that which has value. But the truth is, God is actually seeking that which has no value. So that intrinsically, the thing that doesn't have any value will assume that it got all of its value from the one who gave us the victory. Talking about Jesus the Christ, Emmanuel, the one who was slain before the foundation of the world and the one who died on the cross and in the presence of his enemies, he never said a mumbling word. This is, this is Paul that we're talking about. And Paul acknowledges his confusion 
as to why God would choose him to put this level of apostolic ministry in this kind of person. We're still talking about a strategy for the unperfect. How does this kind of glory live in the spirit of a man that has this kind of story? Well, why would God put this immense valuable gift of preaching the gospel in a man who was looking to kill his children when he found them. Paul said, I'm confused. That's what he meant. He says, I am, I'm perplexed. I'm perplexed. How could, how could such a treasure be placed in this kind of vessel? Have you ever asked yourself that? And, and if you're humble enough, you have to. Have you ever asked yourself, why is God this good to me? Yeah, this is for somebody right now. Have you ever asked yourself, well, after knowing, because you know you, I know me, after all the things you've done, after every place you've been, after all the things you said, have you ever asked yourself, whoo, why does God keep on blessing me? Why would God give a job to somebody like me? Like, why would God give this kind of opportunity to somebody like, why would God bless somebody like me? Because he puts these treasures. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can, can we walk this thing out? He puts this treasure in an earthen vessel. Why would God call a man to cure the very thing he was trying to kill? Could, couldn't he have picked somebody better? You mean to tell me it wasn't some good righteous saint that God could have used to write half of the New Testament? God, you mean to tell me you had to step out of the faith to bring somebody into it? You better be glad that's God's strategy. You better be glad that God is not looking for the in crowd. You better be glad that God is not looking for people who are without fault. You better be glad that God still uses people who have bad motives, and he can still turn you into a miracle. Paul says, I cannot understand why this level of apostolic ministry has been placed in my soul, and how can God put this kind of glory in a man that has this kind of story? And what I love about Paul is that he does not hide his imperfections. Paul puts it out there. Paul says, of all sinners... Can, can I make an announcement? I am the chief. So I, I think that the church could be more useful if the people in it would act like they still need God. I, I, I think that, that our message could be more palatable to a generation that is increasingly skeptical of our message if they find out we too once were lost, but now we're found that, that, that before you were a preacher, you had a temper. And before you were a deacon, you had an addiction. And before you were a missionary, you had a problem. And, and can I get at least a thousand saints out there that will just testify to somebody and let them know you see me now. But you don't know what I had to go through. Hallelujah. To get here. Is there anybody could just could just get online right now and type a message to somebody in the chat or on the wall or wherever you're watching us if, if you can or get on your Instagram and post a clip of this later on and just let everybody know that this is my testimony that I am glad that God has a strategy for the unperfect and I am glad that he puts the treasure in earthen vessels because if he did not use earthen vessels then I would not have an opportunity. Anybody other than me glad? about the fact that you don't have to be expensive to hold his glory. He, he, puts, he puts the treasure in earthen vessels. And Paul begins this discussion. He says, earthen vessels. Repeat this after me. Say earthen vessels. Come on, say it again. Say earthen vessels. Yeah, I know that's a church word. I know that's, that's not in our normal vernacular. I know that's not something that we say in ordinary conversation, but he's basically saying clay jars, cheap material, earthen vessels, 
Okay, what's an earthen vessel? A glass is an earthen vessel because all a glass is, is sand melted. A coffee mug, it's an earthen vessel because all it is, it's, watch this, it is clay that has been heated. That, that's all it is. It's an, it's an earthen vessel. This, this Yeti cup, uh, they may charge you $30 for it, but all it is is aluminum that has been pressed in a die and shaped, put some insulation around it, and then another covering on top of it. It is nothing more than a few cents to make. There's always a markup on the vessel. That there's always a markup on the vessel. Why? Because of the time it takes to make it. It is made out of cheap material, but the labor is what raises the cost. And anytime somebody calls you cheap, you may say this to them. I am cheap on my own, but because of the labor that Jesus Christ put in me to shape me into the vessel that I am today, I'm expensive because of the cross. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm expensive because of the cross. There is in me that dwells no good thing. So you can look at me. You can judge me and you can say I'm nothing. But when they finish saying that about you, let them know that there is something that increases my value. It is called the labor, a.k.a. the blood of Jesus. And it reaches to the highest mountain. Don't you make me act like I'm in church. And it flows to the Lois, and then this is what grandmama says. She says that blood, because she had to make sure that this testimony was attached to what she just described. Not this blood, not that blood gives me strength from day to day. And that blood shall never, ever lose its power. Paul says, I don't know how this ended up in me. I don't know how it ended up in me. I, didn't, I don't deserve it, but I can tell you something. He says in chapter 5, watch what he says. He says, we have this building, eternal in the heavens, not made by hand. He, he, say, he says, don't, you, don't get it twisted. I start out in an earthen vessel, but by the time this thing is over, I'll be in another building, not made by hand. So, so, so really what, what they're criticizing and really what they're ostracizing and, and, and listen to me, really what they're lying on. Are you listening to me? Cause I'm getting ready to help you. Stop defending rental space. <laughs> You're not going to be here long. This is not where you're staying. You got another building not made by hand. If they lying on you, they're lying on rent space. If they're talking about you, they're talking about rent space. If they're trying to get you fired, they're going to get rent space fired. But after this old earthly tabernacle shall dissolve, we got another building not made by hand. That's the strategy for the unperfect. That no matter what cancer does to this body, cancer doesn't kill my spirit. No matter what a heart attack does to this body, no matter what a stroke does to this body, no matter what COVID does to this old earthly tabernacle, God's got another strategy for the unperfect. We don't die. We go from glory to glory. And those of us who die in him, we shall live. We shall live again. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You mean to tell me that I can get something expensive out of something so cheap? You mean to tell me that it's not about the vessel? Vessel looks shiny. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Yeah, you know the rest. Whatever man sows, that shall he also reap. I am a giver by nature. I can't tell you how many things I've given away. I've given away money. I've given away clothes. I've given away time. But there's an old thing my grandmother taught me. She says, you can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try, and the more you give to him, the more he gives to you. Here's the truth. Everything I've ever released as a result of the tugging of my heart of the Holy Spirit, God has always replaced it. I've never given a dollar that God didn't double. 
I've never given time that God hasn't replaced. I've never had a conversation with somebody without God sending somebody to have a conversation with me that was useful for the next level of my life. That is what sowing and reaping is all about. As we get ready to give today, I want you to dig deep down in your soul and do this. I don't know if you often do this. I want you to try it and say, God, what do you want me to give today? Now, the reason why I say that is because if you listen to God, then what he says to me won't be what he says to you, because I believe that it is not about equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice. We accept your ability to ask God what he wants you to do. Every little bit that you do helps. And it keeps us in line with our vision, and it gives us the ability to make sure that we're helping people who are less fortunate and who cannot help themselves. You would not believe how many people need our help, and we cannot help them unless we as a community of believers are faithful. So be faithful over your few things and watch God turn it into much. I'm going to pitch you back to the second half of self-defense. May God bless you, and y'all, I can't wait till we get back together. Self-defense. Everybody say self-defense. I'm going to get there. He says, he says we have this, this treasure in inferior vessels. We, we have this treasure in fragile vessels. We, we, have, we have this treasure in inexpensive vessels. We, we have this treasure in expendable vessels. I'm going to help you because it helped me. Listen, it ain't deep, but it's true. Come here. Paul has just given you permission to be human. (laughs) Because if you listen to people now, you got to be perfect. If, If you listen... It's, I, I, I see it all the time in politics. You, you have a person who will come out and say, uh, I'm running for this, or I'm running for that. And then here go all the haters digging up everything they ever did wrong and, and putting it out on front street because we expect people to be perfect when they come out. And see, I've learned this about us. We are afraid to exercise our gifts and we are afraid to go after our dreams and we are afraid to become what God has called us to be because we know that there is a cost when we come out and say this is what God wants me to be. But let me tell you something. Don't you allow any amount of fragileness to keep you behind the curtain and in the closet about what God has created you to be. You are a beast. You have a vision. You have a calling. There is a company in you. You are supposed to be a pilot. Politician. You are supposed to be a lawyer. You're supposed to be a doctor. And I don't care how bad your grades were. Go back to school and redo it. Why? Because he puts the treasure in earthen vessels. I don't care what your GPA was in high school. Don't you let your GPA tell you what you're supposed to do next. Go back and do it again. Why? Because he puts the treasure in the earthen vessel. He put Facebook in the college dropout. You don't have to be successful in order to succeed. He'll put the treasure in an earthen vessel. Oh, pastor, I I, want to do it, but when I look at other people doing that, they can do this and they can do that. That's fine. But you have to understand that God wants to get this treasure through your vessel. And the weaker you are, the more glory he will get. How can you explain somebody who got a GED and no high school diploma and and had a child when they were 14, 15 years old and like the one young lady who said that she had had four children by the age of 19, but guess what? She paid her rent for a year because it ain't how you start to know about shot. It's how you finish and I'm talking to every earthen vessel that is watching me right now. I want you to tell everybody in your house. I want you to tell everybody who follows you on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat chat black planet if you still got it and I want you to text them and tweet them and tell them God's got a strategy for the unperfect 
And that's my self-defense. I'm not perfect because I'm clay. I'm sorry I cussed you out, but I'm clay. I'm sorry I went off on you, but I'm clay. Stop expecting something out of the vessel. It ain't me. It's the treasure on the inside of me. And I didn't ask God for it. I didn't ask him for the gift. I didn't ask him for the gift. But he gave it to me. He gave it to me. Stop trying to explain yourself. Just tell him he gave it to me. I don't know why I can think like this. I don't know why I have this kind of wisdom. I don't know why I dream like this. I wasn't born in this kind of thing. I don't know why I'm a millionaire. I don't know why I'm rich. My mother was poor. I don't know why, but I can tell you I know how he put the treasure in the earthen vessel. That's your defense. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and recognize it's because you're earthen vessel that he picked you. Um, if I make a bottle out of gold and I put wine in the bottle, even though the wine is expensive and so is the container, the gold in the bottle would bleed into the wine, thereby destroying the wine. Now, I'd ask myself, God is a king. He's the king of kings. Why wouldn't he put his contents in expensive vessels? John 2, Pastor Hammond says that when he went to the custom of the feast and he put wine, he, he didn't put wine in chalices. He didn't say, bring me the chalice. He didn't say, bring me the silver bowl. He said, bring me the earthen vessels. Bring me the water pots. Why? Why? Why would God put something so expensive in something so cheap. Let me tell you why. The reason why God puts expensive things in cheap vessels is he never wants competition between the contents and the container. He wants to make sure that the contents always outweigh the container. So the worse you are, the more he can use you. The broken, the more broken you are, the more glory he can get out of you. The more frustrated you are, the more visions he can give you. The more afraid you are, the further he can take you. You got to understand He's looking for broken vessels because the potter wants to put you back together. Again, stop pretending like you got it all together. Stop walking around here acting like every day is a great day. Stop pretending like people don't get on your nerve. Stop acting like you don't want to cuss folk out, tell them where to go, how to get there, and give them a receipt so they can get another ticket to find out how to get to the next place. Stop acting like you ain't got a little thug left in you. Stop acting like you ain't got a little street in you. Stop, stop walking around because it's in you. Why? Because you are an earthen vessel. He's looking for somebody who needs his help. He's looking for somebody who will throw themselves on the mercy of the court. He's looking for somebody who prays when they don't know what to do. He's looking for somebody who's so afraid to succeed that they will ask him to cover them in his precious blood. He's looking for somebody who doesn't know where to go and who won't take a step without saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if you would draw yourself from me. I don't know where to go. That's your self-defense. Your self-defense because everybody's expecting you to be perfect. I can hear him talking to you now. You're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be a Christian. And why are you afraid of COVID-19? You're supposed to be the church. They got all kind of commentary on what we're supposed to be. But your self-defense is, yes, I am saved, but I'm still clay. I have a relationship with God, but oh, wretched man that I am. I was born in the sin and I was shaping in iniquity and, and for all of the perfect saints who think that there is no room for people who are not mistaken, this message isn't for you. I'm trying to get people unstuck and to give you a real perception of your God and your God ain't like your enemies. Your God is not like your haters. Your God is not like your boss. Your God is not like your hateful cousin. Your God is not like your miserable ex. Your God is different. Your God is bigger. He's stronger. He's wiser. And he loves you just the way you are. That's the strategy for the, for the unperfect. That's your self-defense. Yeah, I said something I didn't mean to say, but I'm clay. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I made a mistake. I, I, I had three children out of wedlock, but, but, but I'm clay. And, and don't let the people in the church make you think that because you didn't live your life according to some, some strict law that God never instituted, that you are rendered useless for the work of God. He's looking for earthen vessels. He, he's looking for clay jars. For the excellency of God. For the excellency. Oh, what? Oh. I, can y'all bring that passage back up on the screen so they can see it? Because I just, I just got a revelation. He says, he says, listen, I want you to see this. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God. Notice that the excellency is not on the vessel. It's on the power. The excellency is on the power not the vessel, not that the vessel would be excellent, but the power in the vessel. Lord, help me. That the power in the vessel might be excellent because as long as the power is excellent, God can work on the vessel. He is the potter. I am the clay and he's, he's molding me. And, and, and let me tell you something. You won't meet everybody's expectations and you will let people down and you won't always get it right. But I'm here to tell you that you are the clay and it is not about the vessel it is about the treasure and because you are not worthy does not mean that God can't use you none of us are worthy for the potter to put his hands on me I, I listen I can stay here all day long I can stay here all day long because because I feel like the devil's trying to take the church from us and, and we've got all of these rules and legalistic opinions and we got all kind of people and, it's, and now we're not able to come together and now the enemy is using the internet to get God's message and to dilute it and now we've got all of these Pharisees reasserting themselves and you can see people in the comments and saying all kinds of things but let me tell you our God is the same and he changes not. He is the same yesterday, today and forevermore and his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient and, and it's made perfect in your, not perfection, in your weakness. Perhaps this is the first time anybody has ever told you, you have permission to be weak. <laughs> Perhaps this is the first time you've ever heard in your life, it's okay if you don't always get it right. Perhaps God is using my voice to pierce through decades of negative conversations you've had with family members and friends to let you know that no matter what you did or did not do, you're still in his hands. That it's okay that you started a company and it didn't succeed. That doesn't make you a failure. It just means you may have tried the wrong venture. Oh, they repossessed my car. They evicted me out of my house. I'm a failure. No, to fail is to begin again with increased intelligence. That's my definition of failure. It is the opportunity to begin again with increased intelligence. I, uh, I didn't want to use this box. They didn't give me an endorsement check, but I'm going to have to use it. This box, so very cheap. So very cheap. They didn't even take the time to glue down the tag. If I had to guess, This box may be worth five cents. They make it in bulk, so it may be less than that. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You mean to tell me that I can get something expensive out of something so cheap? You mean to tell me that is not about the vessel. Vessel looks shiny. 
the vessel is loud and has a brand, the vessel is doing all the talking, but the treasure will do all the walking. The vessel is saying, look at me, but it's so easy to dismantle. It's so fragile because it's never about the vessel. It's about the treasure. And greater is he that is in me, in me, than he that's in the world. Did you know that this old earthly tabernacle, this is rent space, you have perhaps put too much investment in a temporary facility. I don't know if you've ever built out a business, but when you go to a rent space or even apartment, nobody goes into an apartment, pays a thousand dollars a month, and then goes and changes every light in every room and put a chandelier in the bedroom and put a chandelier in the living room and puts permanent fixtures on the wall and rips up the carpet and puts plush carpet down and takes out the tub and put in a jacuzzi. Well, that's what you do to a house where you're going to stay. But when you're in rental space, you suffer with the accommodations because you know that you won't be there long. The psalmist says, I was shaping in iniquity, and in my mother's womb, I was born in the sin. John 8 says, if we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in you. That's when your mama, you remember your mama used to say when you told a, a story, because when I was growing up, you couldn't say lie. You had to say, telling a story. And, and that's, you remember, but, but grown people could say lie. And you remember your mom used to say, you a lie and the truth ain't in you. That, that, she was really quoting this scripture. She was really quoting John 8, 24, when it says, it says that, that if you say you have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Can I tell you something? The devil wants to destroy you with an illegitimate perception of what you are. The devil wants to destroy you by making you believe that you can achieve a set of values that are off limits to humanity. And the expectation that God has over you. If God had given humans the ability to remain perfect after the fall of Adam and Eve, he would have not instituted a defense plan to redeem that which was lost. Every person since Adam was born into sin and shaping. Help me, Holy Ghost. I hope I'm delivering somebody. Shaping in iniquity. The devil wants to destroy you. What makes you valuable? It's not what you have on. Stop defining yourself by what you wear. Have you ever seen people that walk a certain way and have a certain kind of attitude because they wear a certain brand? And then you turn the TV on and you see a billionaire in starch jeans and a white t-shirt. You know what they found out? They'd rather have treasure and not vessel. See, those of us who struggle financially, we keep buying vessels, cars, that's a vessel, houses, clothes. We keep buying stuff 
to put on us instead of investing in the thing in us. You have a treasure. You have a vision. You have a destiny. And if you're going to spend anything you have, spend it on the development of your future. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. I wanted to tell you this today. I feel the Holy Spirit saying, Minister, I'm done. He says, tell my people to shift their perspective from the container to the contents. You remember when they used to say in church, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. What they were saying is, this thing in me is a lot better than these things on me. You are not defined by what you have, nor are you defined by what you don't have. Just because somebody lives in a mansion, it doesn't make them better than you because you live in a one-bedroom apartment. They can drive a Bentley. You can be catching the bus. That's not what the value is. They can have a diamond on every finger, and you can be 50 years old and never owned a diamond in your life. That is not how you are defined. They can have furniture in every room, and you can be sitting and sleeping on the floor. But as long as you have that thing in you, that treasure in your earthen vessel, God told me to tell you that your day of redemption and reckoning is coming. I give you the peace and reassurance of knowing that you have a self-defense for every time you failed. For every time you didn't reach the mark, for every time you fell short. <laughs> I know you tried. I know people don't always give you the credit. But I just want you to remind yourself, I know where I didn't get it right all the time. It's because I'm clay. It's because I'm clay, and I told you this was the backdrop to last week's message, but here's what the Bible says. Follow me, cameraman. He says he was on the wheel. I can imagine, I can imagine, George, there, there had to be a trash can at the potter's house. I mean, it would be irresponsible to have a wheel and clay and water and no trash. I can imagine there had to be trash there, a trash can, but when given the option with an imperfect thing in his hand to either throw it away, he didn't choose to throw it away. The Bible says he chose to throw it down. And then he crushed it. And then he picked it up, and he began anew. You're getting ready to walk into your new season. You're getting ready to walk into your, but if it had not been for God season. You're getting ready to experience a resurgence of the glory of God on your life in a pandemic, in political unrest, in distrust and confusion. Resist the, the desire to argue and just understand that in the end, the will of God will be done. If you're watching today, I would like to arrest your attention for 30 seconds. 
And I want you to know that God has put a self-defense plan in place for you. There is a reason why you don't always get it right. You're clay. But according to John chapter 2, he told them to bring him the water pots. And then he filled them again after they had been emptied. God told me to tell you, he's about to bring you closer and he's about to fill you again. He's going to fill you with joy. He's going to fill you with hope. He's going to fill you with prosperity. He's going to fill you with ideas. He's going to fill you with thoughts. Get ready. There's a new miracle season. And it has your name on it. God, touch us today, this morning. Some will watch this at night. Some will watch this later in the week. Thank you that your promises are yes and amen, and they don't have expiration dates on them. And even if a person sees this message a year from today, please pack your power in the message so it is even useful many moments from now. That when they see this message, they will know that we are Christians by our love. Let every person under the sound of my voice accept your son, Jesus Christ. Bring peace to those who are confused. And God, let it be the peace that surpasseth all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being attentive to the word of God. Remember, you have a defense. You are clay. And God has a strategy for the unperfect. I love you. I really mean that. And ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll see you on Tuesday. What an amazing word we just had from our pastor. We thank God for you and your ability to join with us on this week. If you're like me, that word resonated with your spirit. We want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We couldn't do this without you. So at this time, I want to give you an opportunity, if you haven't already had it, to get in on this seed time and harvest. There's several ways you can give. They're listed at the bottom of the screen. Whether you're a member or you're still visiting with us online, trying to make up your mind, we want you to get in on this seed time and harvest season. We want you to know that we could not do this without you. And so we thank you in advance for your gifts. We've had word, we've had worship, we've given our gifts, but what we really want to talk about is salvation. Without salvation, none of this means anything. Jesus said that I came that the lost may be found. We want to invite you into the fold, into the family of Christ. If you want to accept salvation today, there's a number, there's a text where you can text and become a part of our family or God's family. Either way, you get to belong to a family. Listen, I want to pray with you, believing in faith that God has done exactly what you expected and more. Father, I thank you for these, your people. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in their hearts, their minds, their bodies, and their souls. Thank you, God, for we know that you're covering us in and through all things. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and God keep you. And remember, when you watch next time, you share you like, and you invite someone to tell them about what God is doing. God bless.